Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be doing the Grand Slam of the AMC 10B of 2020. Number 25, but for those of you who took AMC 12, it's number 24. Nonetheless, this was the final problem on the AMC 10B of 2020, and so it should be the hardest problem. And that's what I thought at first, but actually looking over this problem, the problem itself isn't that bad compared to some of the previous AMC 10 final fives. It just has some scary notation, but is easily solvable by most people. So that's what I'll be going over today. Let d of n denote the number of ways of writing positive integer n as a product n equals f1 times f2 dot 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 fk, where k is greater than equal to 1. The integers fi are integers strictly greater than 1. And the order in which factors are listed matters. That is, two representations differ only in the order of their factors are counted as distinct. For example, the number 6 can be written as 6, 2 times 3, and 3 times 2. So d of 6 is equal to 3. What is d of 96? So just starting out with this problem, we can see several things. Factors play a huge part in this problem. In d of 6, all the numbers involved were factors of 6. So in finding d of 96, I think it'd be useful to list out all the factors of 96. So here I've listed all the factors of 96. So let's say for any of these factors, we want to express one of the d of n. And we express 96 as the product of one of these select factors times all the ways that you can break up the next factor. To start out with, we can't pick our first factor to be 1, because then that would mean f1 is equal to 1 in this notation. However, it says fi are integers strictly greater than 1. So in this case, 1 won't work, because 1 is not greater than 1. So we can just cross that off the list immediately. Next, if we pick f1 to be 2, then we have to express 48 in the remaining of f2 times f3 times all the way to fk, where no ones can be involved once again, and all the diff different notations, all the different ways to break up 48 are all involved. So technically, to find all the way different ways we can break up 96, inside this problem, we have to also find out all the ways to break up 48. So it's like a recursive sequence right there. In this one case, we have to find out all the different ways we can break up 48. So we can actually write this in respect to one another d of 96 is equal to d of 48. However, that's not the only case involved, because this was only taking 2 as the f1. If we take 3 as the f1, then we have to break up 32. So we get that d of 96 is equal to d of 48 plus d of 32, and we kind of just keep on going down the list like this. After we go down this process several times, taking one of these factors to be our f1 and try, trying to find out all the ways we can break and rearrange the next term, we hit 96. And then we realize 96 is just that case where we rewrite 96 as 96, d of 96 to be 96. Because we can't use 1 at all. So d of 6 is just 96. And there's one way of doing that. So we can add 1 to our sum. So adding this all together, we get d of 96 to be the sum of d of 48 plus d of 32 plus d of 24 plus d of 16 plus d of 12 plus d of 8 plus d of 6 plus d of 4 plus d of 3 plus d of 2 plus 1, where 1 is just the d of 96 equal 96. However, we can't circle this and say, okay, this is our answer, because we have to find out what each of these d's are. So we have to start finding values for the d's. And we should probably start with one of the sm smaller values, because just like how we broke up d of 96, the d's of all its factors, and then uh, added 1, we can break up d of 48 and d of 32 and bigger numbers like that as the sum of uh, the d's of all of their factors, plus an additional 1. So if we start out by establishing what the values of their factors are, we can express d of 48 as a number instead of just d's of smaller numbers. 
So let's start with the smaller ones to build up the factors that we can later express the bigger d's as. So to start, d of 2, well, we can calculate this the old-fashioned way. 2 can only be written as 2 because you can't break up 2 into any other numbers because 2 is prime. So d of 2, that's just 1. Same thing with d of 3. d of 3 is also prime and cannot be broken up or written in, in any other numbers. So it's also 1. d of 4, well, 4 can be written as 2 times 2 or just 4. We can't do 1 times 4 because remember, then we're going to have 1. So we get d of 4 to be 2. Now, d of 6, it's given to us in the problem. d of 6 is 3. The next value we need to find for is d of 8. So we broke up d of 96 as a sum of this factor. So let's do the same thing with d of 8. d of 8 would be equal to the sum of the d's of all of its factors. And then we just tag on an additional one in there. So d of 8 would equal to d of 4 plus d of 2 plus 1. So we got d of 4 to be equal to 2 and d of 2 to be equal to 1. And then once we add that additional 1, we get d of 8 to be equal to 4. Next value you need to search for is d of 12. We do the same thing with d of 12. We write it as its factors, the d's of its factors, and then tag on a 1 at the end. d of 6 plus d of 4 plus d of 3 plus d of 2 plus 1. Well, we've established that d of 2 and d of 3 are 1s. And then d of 4, we hunted for in the last one, and we found out d of 4 is just 2. And then d of 6, it gave us in the problem to be 3. So d of 12 is going to equal the 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 8. Next value you need to find is d of 16. Just rinse and repeat what we've been doing for the past couple of times for d of 8 and d of 12. It's equal to d of 8 plus d of 4 plus d of 2 plus the 1, which is just 16. d of 8 we've established to be 4. d of 2 we've established to be 2. And d of 2, well, as I said like several times, 2 is prime, so the only way to write it is just 1. So we get 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, which gives us d of 16 to be 8. Now we're finally onto the bigger numbers, d of 24. Well, do what we did again, just break up d's in terms of its factors, the d's of its factors. d of 24 will equal to d of 12 plus d of 8 plus d of 6 plus d of 4 plus d of 3 plus d of 2 plus 1, which is just the 24 itself. d of 12, we found right here to be 8. d of 8, we found right here to be 4. d of 6, it told us in the problem d of 6 was 3. d of 4, we found for ourselves to be 2. d of 3, 3 is prime, so 1. d of 2, 2 is also prime, so 1. And then we just tag on that 1, we get d of 24 to be 8 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, giving us a grand sum of 20. We're running out of space on this page, so I'll go to the next one. This problem isn't that hard, it's just kind of tedious. But it's a 25, so what do you expect? So, going back to our list of factors, we found out d of 24 to be 20. Now d of 32 is what we're searching for. d of 32 is just the d's of its factors. So, the sum of the d's of its factors. So, d of 16 would be one of them. d of 8 would be another of them. d of 4, d of 2, and then just 32 itself, so one case. And then, we've already found the values of each of these before. d of 16 would be 8, d of 8 would be 4, d of 4 would be 2, d of 2 would be 1, and then we just add 1. 
giving us the sum of 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is also 16. Now, we just need to find d of 48, add all these numbers up, and we get our answer for d of 96. d of 48 will once again be the sum of its, the d's of all its factors. So, d of 24 would be involved, d of 16 would be involved, d of 12 would be involved, d of 8, d of 6, d of 4, d of 3, and d of 2. But we can't forget that extra one in there because it could be 48 itself. And then we found for each of these values, d of 24 is 20, d of 16 is 8, d of 12 is 8 again, d of 8 is 4, d of 6, it gave us in the problem, 3, d of 4 is 2, d of 3, well 3 is prime, 1, d of 2, also prime, 1, and then we get the extra 1 at the end. Adding all of this up, we get this to sum up to 48. Interesting. D of 48 is 48. So then, the final job left for us is to just sum up all these numbers. So, we can just do that quickly and easily. 48 and 2 will give us a 50. Three ones here. The 3 and the 4 would give us another 10. And then 8 plus 8 would give us 16. 16 plus 16 would give us 32. 32 plus 20 would give us 52. So we get 50 plus 10 plus 52. Well, 50 plus 52 is 102. 102 plus 10 is 112. So in this case, it's our answer choice A. Now, I'm used to seeing impossible, like, mind-boggling number 25s. But this 25 wasn't that mind-boggling at all. In fact, once we figured out the pattern, it just became a bashy rinse and repeat. And we ended up solving the problem with little to no difficulty whatsoever. In this problem, it was really important to work with the smaller steps, and then use these to add up to bigger numbers. Because if you start with 48 right away, that would have been pretty tough. But since we started out with the 2s and the 3s and the 4s, eventually we got the factors of 48, and we could just add numbers to get the value for D of 48. So, it just shows, with the unknown pattern and an unknown like, notation that's not ever seen before, these kinds of notations that are just made up for problems, the best approach is to just try out patterns with smaller numbers, and eventually you will succeed with the bigger numbers. Just keep on testing and trying. I've talked about it with number theory problems and other sorts of problems, but the best approach for these kinds of what are, what are they problems, like you have no idea how to attack them, just try out small numbers, just try out with some numbers, and eventually you can get an answer and you can get a way to find out the solution to your question.